Hey, what's up? This is Todd Smith. I'm back with another video. In this video, I want to talk about Zen Beats and my first impression of the desktop version. I'm exploring both the desktop and the iOS versions, and I want to give first impressions and overall reviews of each platform separately because I feel putting them in one video might be a little confusing and I feel they possibly have different strengths. Now, this is just a first impression, kind of speaking about my first six hours experience with it. I'm not doing a full review yet. I want to spend a little bit more time with it. I will be doing a video where I actually explore it live and do a full review very soon. So keep an eye out for that. And as always, I need to thank you for taking the time to check out this video. There's a lot of people making synthesizer iOS based content. You could be watching their video, but you are watching mine right now, supporting this work. That means a lot. Thank you very much. A few content creators have started making videos about Zen Beats, but they are kind of just general light overviews and let you hear a few sounds and they don't really speak too deep into what's going on. Within these next series of Zenbeat videos, I want to go into the full exploration of these apps on desktop and iOS because there is just not much said about it when it comes to what is actually going on here. And there is just not many tutorials or really anything overall. So I figure it would be really nice to do a deep dive into this. And since it's $100 to unlock this on all systems, which is a decent investment to some people, I figure it is fair to explore all the good and bad aspects of this system and show it to you guys. Now first let's talk about the user interface. The user interface is directly taken from the tablet. That is something that might throw some people off right away and at first it really felt kind of awkward. But I have to say after learning kind of how it works and even with the minor full screen mode it has. It really doesn't feel too bad on the desktop, not as bad as I thought it would be because the way the whole interface works is 100% replicant of how a tablet works. So you can't really stretch things out like you would do in Ableton within certain sections. But honestly, overall, I'm pretty impressed that the interface wasn't really that big of a hassle after I'd say about 45 minutes of getting used to how everything works within the interface on the desktop. That is something not everyone might agree with, but that is just my opinion. Then when it came to the sequencer, I was pretty impressed. It acts a lot like you would expect a Roland hardware sequencer to. Or I would say exactly like you would expect a vintage or classic Roland sequencer to work. It has all the ins and outs of a sequencer you'd want with your metronome, with your various timings. You can really stretch it out to really long sequences. You have various phases that you can make. The editing and recording process is pretty fluid and pretty easy to do. You can turn on and off the lock to grid. You just really have a lot of options there and it feels really nice to use. Now I did not unlock the desktop version, which is $50 if you want to unlock it fully on the desktop. This unlocks more sample packs and I think more synths and the ability to use VST instruments within this ecosystem. So I could only try out the bare bone synthesizers they give you within the free system, and I will say they are not really super impressive. They don't really take after Roland's legacy, because Roland kind of bought this program out from somebody else. So it's not like Core Gadget where they built it from the ground bottom and everything is built from Roland's legacy. It just feels like a bunch of random synthesizers and they don't even have a full range of keys. And overall, they're just not really that impressive or inspiring. Some of the drum kits are actually kind of usable and kind of good. They do, I would say, to take after Roland a little bit more than the synthesizers do. And I feel they're just pretty usable overall, even though there is a limited kit amount within the free version. The internal effects, the ones I played with, I actually fairly enjoyed. I used the reverb, the delay, I think the bit crusher, and a few other effects. And they actually were semi-decent for the internal effects. I was impressed with those. I used MIDI with audio in and kind of used the delay and reverb on my Neutron and my Model D. 
Again, I was fairly impressed with the internal effects that I played with. And then we're getting to the meat and potatoes and the part that really got me kind of interested in this whole program to begin with. The fact that you have unlimited MIDI and unlimited audio tracks in the free version. I thought that was pretty cool. And so then I got around to testing the audio in MIDI. I hooked up my audio interface into the computer, which was the Focusrite 18i8, and the audio worked perfectly fine. I had three instruments going. I could multi-track them great. I could monitor all the tracks at one time, so I could actually record multiple tracks at once. And actually, the process of recording live audio into Roland Zen Beats was actually a pretty fluid process. I did check out the export option, though I didn't test it fully. I got all the way to pretty much the very last page, and you can send it to Dropbox and various options like that if you want to export a wave. And to me, it looked like that whole process was working correctly. So then I took the time to focus on, again, another important aspect, which was the MIDI. And this is where I hit the road bump. I actually got to the point where I could play multiple MIDI tracks and I could get MIDI track one and two to actually work on the internal keyboard within Zen Beats. Everything else was working great with the MIDI out. I was able to play multiple parts live at the same time with my MIDI keyboard and splitting the zones, you know, the various MIDI channels, one, two, three, four, whatever I wanted. But once I laid down the MIDI data, no matter what MIDI channel was, no matter what setting I did, it always sent it to MIDI channel one. And I just could not figure that out. And it advertises it as having unlimited audio and unlimited MIDI tracks. And so you're gonna assume you're gonna be able to do this if you buy it. And as of right now, that is something I have not been able to do. But that was a huge, huge snag because to me, the strongest selling point to this was a free unlimited audio, unlimited MIDI possibility across all platforms. And on the desktop versions, the MIDI out even went to your instruments and your hardware. To have that for free was actually a pretty cool option. And then once the internal effects were semi-decent, I got even more excited. And I, could, for the life of me, could not figure it out. I will spend more time on this because there is actually some good aspects to this program. If you played with Zen Beats on the desktop and you've tried to send MIDI out to multiple instruments and you've done it successfully on multiple MIDI channels, please let me know what you did because I, for the like of me, couldn't figure it out and I'd love to know. Other than that, I'm going to kind of keep exploring this because, like I said, if the, I can get that working, this, this is actually a fairly decent program for a free program on a sequencer slash recorder. And keep an eye out for my iPad Zen Beats first impression in the next couple of days. That one I did unlock. It was only $15. You got access to external plugins that were compatible within the iOS ecosystem. And for $15 in within the iPad, anyone who knows that, that's actually a cool little um, bonus. So I figured... I would at least try it and it would give me something more to review because with the desktop version, you had the MIDI out, you had the hardware, you had the multiple audio. And to me, I felt that was a really, really strong point. So paying the extra $15 for the iPad version gives me the ability to explore the MIDI out into the various external apps. So keep an eye out for the first impression on that ZenBeats iOS. I hope you guys enjoyed my first impression on the ZenBeats desktop. As always, I need to thank my patrons. You guys have supported me massively. The fact that you guys do motivates me to make more content, more music, and I can't thank you guys enough. Until next time, stay positive, stay creative, support each other, and peace.